Warning, this video will contain spoilers from chapter 1030. You've been warned. Hello my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl, and I want to discuss Devil Fruit Awakenings. This is my first time covering this topic, which I think is timely considering what happened in the last chapter. And if you'd like to hear more One Piece discussions, then make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Chapter 1030 might have shown us something that will play a crucial part in taking down the Yonko Alliance at Onigashima. Because in the chapter, we found out that both Eustace Captain Kidd and Trafalgar D. Water Law have a awakened their respective devil fruits, which is a process we didn't get to witness ourselves because this occurred off screen, but we're not here to talk about the impact of Oda's choice to off screen this moment. No, in this video, we're going to delve into the possibility of another awakening, which may lead to the destruction of the Yonko as we know it. But before we get into all of this, let's scoot back a little and clarify what an awakened devil fruit even is. When we talk about awakened devil fruits, it's likely that our minds will turn to Doflamingo, and rightly so, because although this wasn't the first first instance of an awakened devil fruit, it was the greatest and most significant explanation of an awakening which was given to us in Dressrosa during Luffy's fight with Doflamingo. Don Quixote Doflamingo displayed perhaps the most masterful use of a devil fruit than we had ever seen before when despite his Paramecia classified Ito Ito no Mi, which up to that point had only been known to create threads from Doflamingo's body to manipulate external objects, in chapter 785, we witnessed Doflamingo use his abilities to transform his surroundings surroundings, including entire buildings into strings, which he could then control. And following this, we saw something similar with Katakuri, who was the next major antagonist confirmed to have awakened his Devil Fruit abilities. Katakuri, whose Mochi Mochi no Mi is a special paramecia, allowing him to both produce Mochi, as well as his own body being transformed with Mochi properties to allow him to move in special ways. In chapter 882, we found out that through his awakening, like Doflamingo, Katakuri could alter the substance of external objects. And from these two examples, we could derive some takeaways of how an awakening works or at least for Paramecia Devil Fruits. Paramecia Devil Fruits are the most difficult type of Devil Fruits to define or understand how they're categorized. This category of Devil Fruits seem to be sort of a catch-all where Devil Fruits which don't fit into the animal transformation type of the Zoan or the natural element transformation type of Logia find their place in the Paramecia camp. But if we look into Paramecia Fruits a little deeper, you could make broad generalizations to say that Paramecia Fruits either allow its user to produce something such as the flamingo who could create and manipulate strings, transforms the user's body into something inorganic and not animal related, such as our rubber boy Luffy, and the third, where the user could alter their environment. And this could also take forms in different ways, by affecting a particular area or by affecting other living beings. For example, Corazon's Nagi Nagi no Mi could create an area around him to soundproof, whereas the Toki Toki no Mi sends its user and others forward in time. Now, why was this little explanation necessary? necessary, because as it applies to Doflamingo and Katakuri's Awakened Devil Fruit abilities, the way that the Awakening seems to have worked is that both Doflamingo and Katakuri could expand the Devil Fruit ability to take on the other forms of how Paramecia Devil Fruit works. Let's look at Doflamingo for example. In its standard form, the Ito Ito no Mi allowed Doflamingo to create strings which he would attach to external objects including people for his attacks. In its Awakened form, he could also affect and alter the substance of external objects such as turning entire buildings into strings. Now, looking at Katakuri, as a special paramecia, Katakuri could both create mochi as well as transform his own body to mochi. In its awakened form, the mochi mochi no mi allowed Katakuri to again change his surrounding environment to mochi, unlocking the third and only form of the paramecia which his special paramecia devil fruit wasn't already capable of. So then let's have a look at Kid and Law's awakenings because it doesn't doesn't seem like we had the same sort of expansion of a Devil Fruit ability where a Paramecia Devil Fruit could take on the effect of other characteristics of Paramecia types. Looking at Law, Law's Devil Fruit seems to fall into the type of Paramecia Devil Fruit which allows him to alter his environment or surroundings. He can create a special zone through the attack room and then essentially manipulate anything within that space. And whilst not confirmed, his awakened techniques, rather than being an expansion of his Devil Fruit allowing him to transform himself or create a substance, seems more to be an extension of his previous abilities. Kroom seems to be the application of his Devil Fruit ability on an external object so that he can create that spatial bubble elsewhere where he can cause havoc. 
Kid's awakening seems to be even more unclear. With his awakened technique assigned, we saw that Kid can either spark or increase the magnetism of another person, so that rather than manipulating metal to attract them to himself, which is how we've mainly seen him use it, he made Big Mum extremely magnetic to attract a massive load of metal to her. But it's unknown how this was achieved and whether it has to do with increasing the iron within someone's blood, which is how most of us has predicted he would start controlling other people. And if that was the case, that he increased as the iron within someone else's body, then it would again mean that Kid's Devil Fruit has just been an extension and heightening of his Devil Fruit which can already alter the external surroundings around him, but moving more into the territory of altering other living beings in his surroundings as we've seen of other Paramishas. But this would still be differentiated from Kid actually transforming himself into a magnet or creating magnetic forces out of thin air. In saying that, we do know that these two supernovas are very inexperienced with their awakened powers, and so not only is this taking an extreme toll on their bodies, but it's also possible that they haven't fully mastered their devil fruit forms and there could be more to their awakenings. There's also the fact that these two are the first individuals with a Paramecia devil fruit of the type where they're able to alter their external surroundings in its original form, as distinguished from Doflamingo and Katakuri, who attain this ability to affect their surroundings through their awakenings. So we could say that the awakening of any Paramecia is always to enhance this ability to affect the user's external environment, or that it simply enhances one's use of their devil fruit within the limits of the Paramecia types. In any case, these examples can help, whilst also simultaneously make things less clear when it comes to speculating Luffy's devil fruit awakening. Because seeing the supernova captains awaken their devil fruit abilities against Big Mom massively increased the chances of Luffy doing the same in his fight against Kaido. In fact, it's even possible he'd already tapped into this ability, possibly even prior to this arc, and we just haven't known it yet, which is a possibility that some of you believe is the case according to our little survey, because I asked the Joy Fleet what you all thought Luffy's Awakened Devil Fruit will be, and we got some very interesting answers. And that one isn't a bad guess, considering awakenings can drain one stamina if they haven't mastered the ability yet, which you've seen happen to Luffy whenever he uses his gears, but I think there's still more we can see. And the most popular response as to what Luffy's Awakened Devil Fruit will be was that he'd be able to manipulate his surroundings to transform them into rubber or rubber-like elastic properties. And it's not hard to see why this was the most common thought. Luffy's Devil Fruit falls into the category of Paramecia, which transforms his own body, and in this way, it is similar to the Mochi transforming side of Katakuri. In fact, an idea which was heavily stressed during the two's fight in Whole Cake Island was how alike their Devil Fruits are. And so with all things considered, it does seem very likely that this will be the nature of Luffy's Awakened Devil Fruit, that he'll be able to transform his external environment so that they take on the properties of rubber. And for many of you, this took the form of Luffy essentially turning his environment into a bouncy jumping castle. And not only would this be extremely fun for us, I'm sure our rubber boy himself and some of his like-minded companions would certainly enjoy trampolining all day, but I can also picture some other crazy scenario where this is how he actually saves Onigashima if Onigashima is transformed into rubber and thereby saves everyone if, or let's be real, when when the island drops onto the flower capital. But let's take the time to see some other responses because we had plenty of wild ideas. Because altering one's surroundings isn't just limited to the environment and physical objects. As we know, some devil fruit users can alter other individuals by touching them. Which is an idea that MLD had where Luffy, rather than using his ability for an offensive attack, would bolster the defense of his allies by transforming them to rubber so that like him, they would be more durable. On the flip side, just had a similar but opposite thought that Luffy would turn his enemies into rubber, contort their bodies, and then transform them back so that they suffer incredible internal damage. Though I'm inclined to agree that this does seem very dark for our bright, fun-loving rubber boy. We've also had some who see Luffy's awakening to be more of an enhancement of how his devil fruit currently works, in that it will be more to do with how it affects the rubber properties of his own body rather than affecting his surroundings. For example, Persithius sees Luffy's body being becomes so elastic that it's impregnable from any sort of attack, whether that be haki or swords. Ethems, though agreeing with the majority of Luffy being able to affect his surroundings like Doflamingo, shared a fan theory that Luffy could turn his hair into rubber and create static electricity to use in attacks, which did require me to dive into my scientific knowledge. And I think the way that this would work is that static electricity could be built up within his rubber hair or wherever really, if it was rubbed hard enough. And though this seems to be inefficient time-wise, it 
does certainly seem like the goofy scenario that Oda would love to entertain us with, as in the words of Garp's Fist of Love. But whilst we're talking about electrified attacks, Gilbang had a similar idea where Luffy's body would achieve ultimate elasticity so that it could contract and then bounce back to the extent that it would have a sword-like slashing effect or even emit energy beams. And of course, we can't forget the possibility that Luffy has already awakened his devil fruit and we just didn't know it. Because another popular idea I've come across is that Luffy's Gear 4 forms are actually the result of his awakening, especially his Red Hawk attack, which generates flames. Scientifically speaking, rubber can be fire resistant and it takes a tremendous ignition point to make rubber combust into flames. So it is possible that the reason why Luffy can withstand his flames is a result of his ultra rubber form. And given that Luffy has been wiped out on a number of occasions fighting Kaido in his Gear 4 forms, it is possible that he's been suffering the after effects of utilizing his awakened devil fruit attacks as we were told what would happen to Law and Kid in chapter 1030. Whilst I personally think it's unlikely that Oda would retrospectively explain this to us to be the result of Luffy's awakening for a form we've seen on multiple occasions now, ever since Dressrosa and without the due buildup of hype, given that Law and Kid's awakenings were off screen, I guess it's not so unfair to assume that it may be the same for Luffy too. In which case, we could even assume that Kaido and many of his top officials have also awakened their devil fruits. Because the first time we were introduced to awakened devil fruits was actually the awakened Jailer Beast, where the extent of their awakened ability was extreme durability and incredible recovery speed. Both of which is something we could say we have seen for not only the Governor General Kaido, but also his calamities and even his Tobiropo. Or this may be where the last leg of Onigashima is heading towards. We've seen an incredible amount of new abilities and power-ups in the Wano arc, and with Luffy already learning how to code his attacks with Conqueror's Haki, yet with Kaido still remaining a threat, it does cause me to wonder how Oda will have Luffy achieve his victory. So as the series evolves and we've seen different types of martial arts, unexplained power, and the mastery of Haki, the expansion of perhaps the most prominent and the first source of power in the series may just be the end of it all. From here on out, this may be how we start to view fights in One Piece. But now that you've heard my thoughts, let me know yours by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video, and please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server for more One Piece related fun, or even even become a Patreon member for more roles and powers within that server. Thank you to our patrons who help support the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.